Welcome to Raven TV. I am Michael Kowal, and I'm here with Chloe. So, Chloe, what do we have for today's show? Well, we're going to be looking at some flashback pieces, and because it's our producer's last show with this current producer, we're going to do some interviews with him. Oh, wow. Yeah, so this is our 20, we're celebrating our 20th season, so we're going to get to that, and we'll see you guys at the end of the show. Hello and welcome to Raven TV. I am here with Jim Doyle and this is going to be another part in our series of interviews with Jim. And so what would you like to talk about, Jim? Well, first of all, I'm the communications technology teacher here at Eastside and um, I retire uh, at the end of January, uh, January 31st, 2024. And we're in our 20th season of produ producing sorry, a monthly TV show for uh, Your TV Coach to Go. So it's a milestone show and it's going to be a flashback. In fact, we're going to get together, yeah. I believe, tomorrow and talk a little bit more. Um, one of the things, uh, if I can mention, it's um, you're always afraid of missing names. And of course, when I read out any names, I'm probably going to miss hundreds of names. But there are some fun stories and a few things that I wouldn't mind talking about. Um, it had to start somewhere, yep. the show. And um, the group that we did, um, it was um, oh, Liam Fargy, um, Stephen Salter uh, in there, Nathan, uh, not Nathan Barty, Jordan White, uh, Megan Williams, Ashley Bannister, Sarah Bibijan and Stephen Salter were the, the original hosts when it first started. Uh, Mitch Thibodeau and Brian Belch in the background with Andrew Tarswell and Erica Jensen, Emma Stoliker, Luke Zebedee. Uh, Leah Brandt. Leah Brandt, by the way, is now married to one of my colleagues, so that tells you how old I am. Uh, Dan, a good fellow. Um, and it all started, we had to design a studio. So we were painting the walls and everything. And a student by the name of Tim uh, Griffin, he, um, he uh, was painting in the back. And he said, don't come in, Doyle. And he spilt a can of uh, black paint in the back room on the rug. We scrubbed it, we soaked it up, we tried everything. But if you're wondering, folks, in the back room for future students in here, this is black spot there. Well, that was uh, Tim and uh, Tim Griffin, he uh, painted that. Um, another student at the beginning, Josh Hill, who is active in sports and everything, he's now with the uh, AHL organization, which is kind of oh, wow. nice. So it had to start somewhere. Uh, and so 20 years later, Michael and, and Chloe and and Graham and Sime and everyone else that's going to be uh, involved with this, um, they're closing up the show. And we're going to put those names on the credits of these so that yes. our ending group all gets it because there's more students in there. Uh, but that's where it started. Um, then, if you allow me to, uh, in this first part of our series, just a few students that, um, and I'm going to miss some, but, uh, you know, Stephanie Corrigan, she was a great photographer. Uh, Brett Gilmore, uh, you might see him in one of the shows, the first shows, Dancing on Tables in the Cafeteria. Wow. Yeah, that was Brett. And so he had a, he had a lot of fun with that. I'm going to um, review these tapes. Then before I was doing the um, monthly TV show, I started off by doing our, our school yearbook, and maybe we can get a camera shot of that. But this is one of the yearbooks that we did. So uh, that taught me a lot of skills. I met a lot of great students doing that. And also, you know, if you have your yearbooks, you can flip back through and see some of your friends and your activities, and you'll see Brett and all those people. Our editor was Sherry uh, Rufferford. Um, uh, she was a brilliant lady, still is a brilliant lady, and she's the one that started off. And then uh, we had Caitlin Kelly as well, another very capable, strong student that were editors. So whenever you do a yearbook, you need someone to take charge, and, and they did. So I wanted to give them a bit of shout out. Tanya, Tanya Mountney, she's a journalist right now. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, so that's great. Dylan Becker, he was a basketball coach, and he came out and, uh, and helped us on some of the interviews. And again, okay. I'm missing a lot of students. Uh, one person, these two girls, uh, Emily Lindgren and Nathika Rumathula, um, they sung at my wedding oh, wow. uh, back in 2002, great students. And Nathika gave me a card. And just, you know, things that mean things to people. So when you give people a gift or a pat on the back, right? Yeah. Nathika gave me this card. I want to bring this up. She gave this to me back in 2002. So Nathika, if you see this show, I've had this posted and tacked up on my back board for 22 years. I'm going to take it home with wow. me. I won't read exactly what's inside. Just at the choir was, you know, a pleasure. But um, it's a beautiful card. And I kept it all those years. So those are things that we keep. Um, uh, you know, Dante Willie is a student who did a raised garden. James Lampkin and Sam Williams, I talked about that. They won gold in, um, in um, 3D animation. So that, we'll yes. talk more about it. 
There's another person, um, uh, well, two, uh, lots of people, right? Yes, um, you, quite a lot. Yeah, yeah, I'm talking quite a lot, a but hey, it's my time, right? This fish here, Lucas Tang said, don't get rid of it, Mr. Doyle. Dark fish, I think he called it, I can't remember. But he said, don't get rid of it. Well, I'm not. I'm going to keep it here. Someone else could throw it out, but I'm not going to throw it out. Um, we had a lot of um, uh, Austin um, uh, Rod Montgomery, amazing photo uh, photographer. I should dust that off a little bit. If we get a shot of that one, he actually went to his parents' bed, uh, basement and uh, used a pellet gun and shot the pellet through the light while it was on. And if you look closely, you can actually still see the pellet. Oh, wow. And um, uh, I said, how many shots? Like, your parents might have killed you. How many light bulbs did you go through? And he said, no one, because he really thought it out. He practiced. He took uh, uh, shots before he actually fired the gun. First shot. So, oh, wow. So you got to... Yeah. Quite impressive. It was. I thought, you know, I got to give that guy a shout out, right? Um, but Jeanette Wong, um, you'll see in the second part, I talk about Raven TV and where we put all of our stuff and you don't see it. That would not have been possible if it wasn't for Jeanette Wong, who is computer science, just finishing up, uh, I think in uh, Waterloo. And um, she did everything. And uh, sort of like yourself, Michael, she yeah. did, every, did everything. And she worked with the AHL teams, helping out with wow. slow-mo replay. She worked with Kochiko a lot. Um, she's a ballerina. She's an accomplished musician for sure. Oh, wow. Strict academic IB student. And she became part of this team. And she's the one that designed and built our website. I can't say enough about her. Um, I, I told the story during COVID. We were uh, live streaming. And she was graduating, but she was the only one. She really knew how to live stream. So, yeah. so there she's dressed up, oh, wow. doing the live stream, puts her gown on, walks over, grabs her diploma, comes back down, takes the gown off, and there she is dressed up doing the show. Dedication. So, um, dedication, but uh, it, yeah, and just a great role model. Um, my sons, Christopher and Jonathan Doyle, they were part of this show. And that was when we had the grade seven eights here at the school, which oh, was wow. nice. And so we had these grade seven eights coming into the club with Coach going to saying, gee, how old are these kids? Because they're there standing up looking at the, the cameras, but very capable. So students out there, grade 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, you're capable of doing all of this stuff for sure. Uh, Dustin Wilson, Dusty, uh, he was another one that came every time to the club. We had, you know, Dusty tried to play Santa, he played Santa Claus one time, and he ran around the school one time in a morphing suit. And we had to tell Dusty that if you're going to put on a morphing suit, you really should have some undergarments on and, and stuff like that. So he quickly realized that that wasn't a good thing. Um, yeah. But uh, the drone footage, you see at the beginning of the show, Greg Fiskowski and Tristan LeClaire uh, did that. Stephen oh, wow. Chen, Jeremy Mulvihill, what a great guy. Uh, and I, I would like, you know, we talk about Josh Vardy and Melanie Burton in, in, in the second half. So we second will, segment? Yeah, second segment. But uh, um, Jeremy, what a character. He was always out, you know, you'll see him on, the, I think, one of the shows he's barbecuing at the end, a real character. Oh, wow. Um, and then as we moved closer, we got into, you know, we had Tanner Higgins was on here. Ebony, a student from Mexico who's been helping us out uh, a lot. A great, great, great student. Uh, Kendra Flindle, um, who don't ask her to fly a drone because she's going <laughs> to smash it. Uh, Addison Press, Nick Rittenhouse, uh, Podcasting, Nolan Dunkley, Owen, Aaron, uh, Nina, uh, Nova, Olivia, Sadie, Jamila, Dorothy, Payton. And I'm going to stop there because I've mentioned this crew here and I'm going to miss someone. Okay. But those students had um, a huge impact, as did so many more. But I, I, we just can't get through it all. So we're going to save for part two about this video and some of these videos here. But um, we do have memories. Yeah. And we have some memories. And this one I'll show my wife when we come home. And uh, Nathika, that card. So when you give someone a card, sometimes they keep it for their entire career. Wow. So um, I appreciate the opportunity, and I look forward to speaking more after a break. Uh, uh, part two, we talk more about some of our students. Okay, well, thank you. We're going to switch to a few clips from our older show to see some of Jim's previous work, and we'll see you after the break. I'm Stephen Ogobelli. 
Welcome to the debut broadcast of Trojan Television, Mora's first television news program. Trojan TV is a monthly program dedicated to bringing you into the life of Mora Secondary School. Mora has added two new special people to its uh, roster uh, this year. Miss Sampson, our new principal, our new vice principal, excuse me, and our new princi principal, Miss Vincent. Our own Liam Fargy had a chance to sit down and talk with her about her new career. I'm Liam Fargy for TTV News, and we're here with Moyer's new principal, Miss Vincent. Miss Vincent Long. Thank you. And as you know, this will just be an interview, so I have some questions for you. So how are you liking it here at Moyer? I love it here. Everybody has been very welcoming. Um, of course, I was in in June, and I met with teachers and staff and parents in June, and um, people have been awesome. I feel very comfortable, and it's a great school, great kids, great programs, and uh, I'm just really happy to be here. Good to hear. So are you a native to Bellevue? I was born and raised in Caring Place, mm -hmm. and I went to school at BCI, Belleville Collegiate, uh, all through high school. So, yeah, I'm a, a resident of this area. Right. And uh, where did you go to university? I went to the University of Waterloo. I uh, have a Bachelor of Honors Science in Kinesiology. Okay. And you've been a principal for how long exactly? Well, this is my fifth year in admin, mm -hmm. uh, three years as principal and two years as vice principal, All right. four years uh, prior to this in Trenton. And what did you teach before you went to the admin oh. field? <laughs> I think I've taught just about everything. I've taught, I, I started in secondary mm -hmm. and I taught uh, math, science, phys ed, and then I switched to elementary and I taught special ed there for three years and then switched back to secondary and taught um, mainly special ed, guidance, co-op, and worked at the board office and curriculum as well for a couple of years on um, careers and co-op and apprenticeships and guidance and uh, that type of thing. So had a bit of a variety in my teaching career. <laughs> anyway, um, also, so I'm just kind of curious, what are your, what are your um, expectations for Moyer students this year? Well, that's a good question, and that's a, an easy one to answer. Uh, the expectations that we have, both Ms. Sampson, the Vice Principal, and myself, are um, that students are good citizens in school and out of school, that uh, students are here to have a great time in high school, but their priority is, is to learn and, and get a high school diploma and be well ready for post-secondary plans. So uh, good attendance and punctuality, uh, good behavior in the classroom, uh, doing their work and participating in the lesson, submitting assignments on time and uh, you know getting involved in other things at, at high school that will develop friendships and good citizenship as well. Wonderful. Also, um, what, so what are your goals like for the school in general, not just the students, but for the school and such? Well, uh, we have met as a staff last Friday. We had a, a PA day and as a staff we did meet and do some school improvement activities uh, which will occur as well with students and, and parents. But uh, we really looked at um, what I call the three P's. We looked at people, and that would be students and, and teachers and parents and community. And we looked at physical plant, which is the building and the space around the building. And we looked at, obviously, program, which is instruction and program implementation and assessment for kids. And we really looked at, um, in terms of program, we have some great programs here, some very unique and specialized programs at the school that other schools don't offer. So we feel we have a pretty good diversity of program here, but we are always looking at continuous improvement in instruction. Uh, how can we teach kids better each year and each, each day we walk into a classroom? So with program, we're looking always for improvement in instruction. Um, with physical plan, we're looking at doing a short-term and a long-term plan for the full building. See, uh, we have a lot of excellent high-end resources and facilities but we realized that we probably have to work short-term and long-term in different areas of the building to make improvements there. Uh, for people, we want to improve communication with parents. We want to have a nice collaborative and positive school culture where uh, students and teachers and parents and community work together for, for the common good goals of our school and uh, great education for our students. So in a nutshell, those are some of the priorities for school improvement. Um, and how do you think these students as you're reacting to the new environment? The students have been awesome. 
I'm really proud of, of the students at Moira. Um, they have responded very, very well to uh, some of the new procedures for attendance and um, students are in their classes, our halls are clean and safe. Uh, students are performing well in their classes already, even though we're just a month in. Uh, I'm monitoring that and um, I've had a lot of students come in and chat with me and work with me and offer suggestions. So. Welcome to Raven TV. I am Michael Kowal and this is going to be our last show under our producer Jim Doyle who created the show. So. So how is it going, Jim? Well, thank you for having me on the show, and you're correct. Uh, it is the last show uh, that I'm producing. Yeah. We hope that uh, it will continue on in some capacity in the future, but I'll give you a bit of history about okay. the, the last show, or the first show, actually. We started in the season 2004 and five, so we're really into our 20th season, and our group got together, and um, we approached your TV, and we said we'd like to do uh, a monthly TV show. And, of course, and I used to work uh, in that building or a building similar to that when it was Kojiko, uh, before Kojiko, it was Cableview Quinty Limited. And that was changed, I think, back in 2000. Anyways, regardless, uh, we started the show in 2004. And uh, I said to the students, okay, so you want to do the show, but yes. we need to have some sort of commitment. We just, if we do one or two shows, okay, fair enough. But we need to, if we're going to commit to a season, then we have to commit to a season. And so we had a good discussion and we had a good group of uh, students that said, well, we'll do it for a season. So I said, great, okay, so if we get one season on our belt, then we can reevaluate that. Well, uh, it's, we're going into our 20th season, so it's been a, a good, uh, a good uh, run, I'd say. Yes, uh, and is there any other schools that have tried to do something along these lines? Well, before us, actually, Nicholson uh, Crusaders uh, did it. It was under um, Pat Ramp and he uh, passed the torch to another teacher and he did that for a while. And they did a, at that time, back in the 90s, it was a weekly show on videotape. Oh. And uh, he was my mentor oh, wow. and gave me the inspiration to move uh, forward uh, and try something here. So uh, Pat Ramp from Nicholson, I believe he is a principal now and he may be retired, uh, but he started it at Nicholson. And uh, so when I came here, after I learned how to become a teacher yeah. uh, and felt comfortable, I thought, well, then I'm going to try it here. And we decided to go with a monthly show just because we had other technology going on as well. And uh, so that we, we thought we'd commit to once a month. And so, yeah, 20 years later, um, we we're wrapping up uh, my, my, my end of it. Yeah. Uh, so you said you worked at Quinty Cable. Uh, how long did you work there? Uh, 15 years full time and a few, two, two years, I guess, uh, part time before then. So I came from industry. So I was from industry from 15 years and I did some other stuff on the side. I did some freelancing, most notably for uh, global television, for things that happened in this area. In fact, uh, Picton High School, they had a lightning strike back in the 90s and I went down and covered that. And I had a piece of that chimney that blew apart. Uh, I had it for years and then I finally parted with that. Uh, and other things. I did a little bit for the Weather Network and CBC in this area, but it was mainly global. But my full-time job was with uh, Cableview Quinty Limited, and that was Mr. Miles, Miles Morton, who owned the business, and his, uh, his children are still involved with uh, the radio and uh, uh, portions of their broadcast, and, uh, and I'm sure they're involved in other areas that I'm not aware of. <laughs> yes, that would definitely make sense. Mm -hmm. uh, so does this mean this is your 40th year uh, teaching? Or I no, 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 no. I've business. only been teaching for like 24 years, 15 years in industry, right? Okay, so you combine so. them together, that's 39 years. You put in the part-time. So I've, I've been at it for about 42 years, and I volunteered a bit before that. So probably in television. Now I give it, you know, maybe date myself, but maybe about 45 years uh, actively working in it. Okay, so you, we're talking about your mentor, and yeah. how did he spark you into getting into the digital media field? Well, so before Mr. Ramp, and Mr. Yeah. Ramp inspired me to become uh, a good teacher and work hard at it and, and to do a, a, a TV show for the community because it was good for the students and the community. Uh, before that, um, it was basically um, uh, back at, uh, in Welland, where I grew up, uh, uh, Armstrong Communications. And uh, Brian McRae, who's no longer with us, he was the person that uh, got me really excited about television. And then from there, I went to school and then worked in the industry. And then from there... Uh, Mr. Freestone, who's no longer with us, uh, he um, encouraged me to go to Queen's to get a teacher's uh, uh, diploma and uh, get into teaching because there was an opportunity in the two late, late 1990s and 2000, which it's still going strong today. Okay, and I see you having to bring a few things onto set today. So can you tell us about your Lens coffee mug? 
Well, this one here, I believe it was Dustin Rod Montgomery, an amazing photographer. And uh, when, he, we, when he graduated, he gave me this gift, and it's a cup. Uh, and it's, but it looks like a, a lens to a camera. So I've always kept that. Um, uh, I've got some other things in the back. There's a fish that uh, Lucas Tang, who won silver in photography uh, at a competition. Uh, he won silver, and then Dustin, was it Dustin? I'm, my mind's going. I think one silver, we got a silver in 3D animation and a golden animation. Oh, wow. uh, golden animation was James Lampkin and Sam Williams uh, um, who did that. And then I think it was, uh, yeah, the silver we got was Chris Parks uh, with it. But uh, again, going back uh, through this, um, this was one of those gifts that, you know, just hold on to, and it's one of those things. And uh, over here are some copies of how we used to do our TV shows. Um, we used to do them what was called live to tape. And what live to tape is, is that you go live and the only time you actually um, stop tape unless something very seriously goes wrong and then you can edit that out. Yeah. And there's a whole history of live to tape and I won't bore the audience with that. But uh, we would make a DVD. I would sit in the back and then we'd have our hosts uh, talking. And then while there, we play the intro, we'd come to the studio they would talk about the next segment. We'd have it on DVD. So myself or another student would be flicking through the DVD, getting it ready and playing it. And then as soon as we had it played, we'd give them the thumbs up. And then they would say, well, we'll go to that segment. So the show was actually put together in real time, 14 wow. and a half minutes. Um, we stopped doing that. Um, in 2009, the CRTC had mandated that broadcasters go to a digital format. I think they had to extend that by a couple of years. But regardless, when they went to a digital format, we were doing analog and it was great teaching but it didn't look that well on TV. So we had to um, um, go digital. And, uh, and then we just did everything basically as an electronic field production where we recorded the segments, segments like this, okay. and we edited it um, together. Uh, now, with the digital technology, as you can see, we have a couple of cameras. We could put a third camera or a fourth camera in if we wanted to. We're actually doing a combination of live to tape, and then we're doing some production afterwards, right? And that's really only to keep the quality up. But I should point this out. We do do live streams from our gymnasium. We've done live streams from other schools where we bring in two cameras and we actually live stream. So we do live events as well. Well, yes. Yeah. So, I, those have been some interesting live streams before, mm -hmm. but they've all turned out pretty well. So would you mind telling us uh, about, so I went over a few old tapes and we'll go in some of the viewers wheel to see some of them later. But uh, like the studio has changed over a lot in the last 20 years. So can you tell us what made those changes, like, what inspired them? So when we decided to go to a, a, a TV show, a monthly TV show, and go uh, live to tape, we needed to build a studio here. And this was more of a, a storage room. It was a good room, it was, but we, want, we turned it into a studio. So I came in one summer and we kind of painted everything, ripped everything apart, and we brought in just a desk and some chairs, and we put up some graphics at the back. In fact, actually, the uh, plastic foam board is still there <laughs> on the backdrop. Uh, but, um, and we did that fine. But then when we went to a video podcasting format, we thought we'd have to try to you know, do something, you know, spruce it up. Yeah. So the solo tubes that behind here, I picked up from one of the local stores and painted them purple. Well, actually they're maroon with Trojans and we put it purple now. Um, I got that idea from Loyalist College because oh, wow. they built some beautiful sets and uh, they put in this uh, nice diffuser cloth and lit it from behind. I said, man, that looks really good. And they said, yeah, it's just sound tubes, right? We just oh. zoom in past the tops. So we did that. The, uh, the frames actually came from my house uh, because we put new windows in. So I kept the frames and then probably some sheer material I got locally and put it in behind there and put a backlight in behind. And um, in behind me, you'll see a sign here. That was being thrown out. So when, in 2018, when we became uh, Eastside and our colors were purple, I'm walking through the neighborhood with my wife. That is tempered glass. That's expensive, but it was a table. And the legs were broken off. But I said, hey, let's grab that. So then we put our, you know, we have a vinyl cutting machine. We put that on there. And we put some lights around it. And uh, it works out really well. So that was actually free. Oh, wow. That's... The table here, I, this, was, this was the most expensive. I, I spent 50 bucks at uh, St. Vincent de Paul. It's actually a beautiful table that extends. And we painted the top. And we put some stickers on it and so forth. And then a few microphones and just a lot of labor. And before you know it, you know, we had a studio built with uh, minimal cost. Yeah, so, yeah. And so over this next, uh, over your retirement, are you planning on coming back and doing some more stuff for Raven TV to hopefully make sure it stays alive? So it's up to the students if they want to continue to make it go okay. of it. And it's up to if a teacher wants to help out and support that. And we always have young teachers coming in. In fact, we have a young teacher coming in right now who's just absolutely amazing. And um, 
So yeah, will I help out if someone reaches out to me? I don't want to be the person that's always just coming in here and saying, hey, you should do this like back in the olden days. But if someone would like to keep it going, uh, I would come in and I would absolutely support them. In fact, on February the 15th with your TV Kojiko, we're doing the boys basketball finals. I'm not sure where they're going to be held probably at Nicholson, but I'll come back and help out the crew with that. So I will help out and, and support our teachers and students anytime they need help. Uh, I just don't want to be showing up at the door unannounced and say, oh, there's Mr. Doyle. He's, you know, he can't let go. I can let go very easily, uh, but I'm also here to help out whoever would uh, require any help. So, so yeah, yeah, I'll be involved. Okay. And I happen to see one of those discs co uh, covers, say, internet copy. Is there a difference between the copies that... Well, yeah, so basically, when we went from this, and this is what Kochigo received, and then we decided, well, why don't we start putting our stuff on the, um, uh, yeah, probably says internet copy on one of these things, but anyways, um, we decided that we'd have our own uh, site. So if you go to raventv.ca, I'll say it one more time, raventv.ca, you'll see a lot of old shows, a lot of things that we do. There's a lot of incredible things that all of our students and staff at Eastside do. And so we d developed that uh, website. Well, then we put our shows on there. So there's, oh, this is the internet copy, right? Uh, now we just, just, you know, copy and paste, you know, this, the show. It's not a big yeah. deal. Um, I do want to point out one thing in our discussion, uh, you know, reflecting back, Probably one of the biggest jobs that um, I undertook was in 2009. Uh, it was our school's 50th anniversary when it was under the name of Moira Secondary School. And um, so we put this out, and it was a labor of love. It took us a long time. The club, we worked very, very hard on this. And um, so the runtime of it is an hour and 42 minutes, but I broke it down into the decades. And the people who attended, we gave them a copy. And I still have copies here so that if anyone contacted the school, they're just back over here. And um, we got a lot of reflection from staff and students over the years. And it was a big, big, big job, but um, it was well worth it. Uh, Josh Farty and Melanie Burton, who hosted the show, are now married. Wow. Uh, Nicholas Simmons, who worked really hard on that show. There's so many. You know, if I start going Jerry Mulville, Mulville, uh, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mess up so many names here. So I'm, I'll leave it there. But, uh, you know, we did have Chris Parks, who uh, was successful uh, in competitions, along with James Lampkin and Sam. Uh, his sister, Lana Williams, did a lot of work with us as well. Jerry Mamalva was always, always there. Dustin Rod Montgomery, Nicholas Simmons, Josh Vardy. Um, I should say our first show, it was Sarah Bibijan and Stephen Salter. And Liam Fargi uh, was the uh, interviewing Miss um, uh, Vincent, who was a principal here at the time. And we actually have that on our website. And it's going to be part of our reflection show that we're doing. So if the folks don't know, after we finish talking or in between we're talking, we're going to just uh, go back and um, reflect on, uh, on some of the shows. So I'll, I'll leave it like that. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for coming out uh, today, Doyle. Uh, I'm really glad we got to do this interview. And I hope to see you around after the show. And... Thank you guys for watching Raven TV for these 20 years, and I'll see you at the end. And thank you. saxophones and trumpets and trombones and new instruments for the music program and some D batteries. Well, I think we have a guitar here. There we go. Well, that's great, Santa, but uh, didn't you get this guitar from the music room? Um, let's go back to the batteries. What are the batteries for? Well, 
As you know, Santa, I just had a new baby daughter. All her toys take D batteries, so if you could bring me some D batteries, that's really going to save me a lot of cash. Well, you know what? You've been a good boy this year. You, might, you just might get them. Oh, thanks so much, Santa! You're welcome. <laughs> I want to be as pretty as Mr. Houston. I'd like bigger guns. Whoa! Huge. Who are you? I'm the real Santa. That's not even a real beard. Brennan Everwine's got a better beard than that. My beard's better than yours. I don't think so. Alexander McGurk's got a better be beard than that. So Santa's beard should be white, like this. It's getting there. Have you seen my period one class lately? No. Oh, that's enough to make any beard go white. <laughs> I, ha I have a large bag of toys. Where's your bag of toys? Right there. The camera can't see that, but they can see this. <laughs> Mr. Houston, what would you like for Christmas? If I could have one thing, it would be guns as big as Corbett's. Yeah, they do look a bit small. Oh, you just might get them this year. Someday, I'm working on them. Carla, what would you like for Christmas? A puppy. A puppy? Well, you've been a good girl, so yeah, you'll get it. Okay. Have a Merry Christmas. Albatross. Mike, what would you like for Christmas? An albatross. snow this year. How are you going to get around? I know. We could use this. But what if it's too slow? I know. We need more power. Power? That sounds good. How do we do it? We need a bigger engine. All right, Santa. We just need more power. What do you think? Looks great. Let's right. do it! Santa, what do you think, man? This is really But I need more food. I haven't had enough food yet. Well, what are we gonna do? I don't have any food. Oh, well, let's go to fast food. Okay. I'm gonna get that place open. I know. We can use the other reindeer. Doyle! Let's go get them. Yeah! Now, let's go get some fast food. Ho, 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 ho. Right, I'll take a number six combo and supersize me. Ho, 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 ho.
ready for Christmas. Um, I've seen a huge, huge improvement in the skill level of all of the girls. Like, if I go out and watch high school level girls now, no comparison to when I went to school. You know, there was a few girls here and there that had, you know, good skills, but now every girl is good, and it's really competitive. So it's a good sport to get into. There's lots of opportunities. You can do it. Yes. There's so much support out there for you. Um, we have obviously well-trained coaches and uh, school spirit. The girls that are playing will help you out because everybody has a different range uh, and background of how much they've played and what they know. And it's basically a learning experience. It's, it's competitive, but with the understanding that some people are just learning. So it's a great way to start into the game. Um, I'd say that we want, well, first of all, to start with numbers, I'd say we want at least, you know, 12, 12 oh, yeah. consistent skaters with a goalie mm -hmm. and in terms of you know what level we're playing at and how many games we're winning I'd want to what do you think I we're gonna take it all <laughs> we're gonna win all our games we're gonna be there we're gonna get new outfits new uniforms we're gonna have a trip overseas I think for sure <laughs> playing in England or something it's just there's no limits to where we can go with this hockey team Olympic tryouts Olympic tryouts absolutely <laughs> there we go so Kayla you're on the hockey team this year <laughs> I was well, did you enjoy that? I did, actually. It was the first um, girls hockey team we had ever at Moira. So did you like the teamwork and like the sports and like, did you feel that you were really connecting? Well, yeah, I've been playing hockey for 11 years, so um, playing it with like, the girls that I usually play with anyways outside of school, so it was basically the same thing. My position is goaltender. Uh, right now I'm playing left wing. Defense. Uh, typical practice starts off with some skating, uh, regular drills, get you warmed up. Then we go into some positional stuff. D's, forwards, split up, uh, work on different things, uh, preparing for games, and then we finish off with either some more skating or something fun. How long have you playing hockey? Uh, around 10 years. This is your first team on the Moira Secondary School team? Yes, it is. This is my second year playing with Moira Hockey. Uh, how many years have you been playing hockey in the state total? Uh, I think this is my seventh or eighth year playing hockey in total. Yeah. I started skating when I was like two years old, and then ever since then I just joined hockey and started playing. Um, I'd say my skating has improved. I've worked on a longer, better stride, quicker stride. My stick handling has improved. I've been, gotten more courage with the puck, uh, gotten my head up, and making a smart pass. Uh, leadership. Well, people get riled up, not settled down. Um, breakouts, shots on the point. Well, I don't want it too hard. Because if I dump it hard for you, then you're just going to take it behind the net. I want to see the four checker come in. Guys, take it easy on Curtis, okay? He's sort of a sitting duck. Okay? with Mr. Boltby of the Moyer hockey team. So, how long have you been coaching hockey at Moyer? Uh, we've been the uh, last couple years, but the program started uh, Atlanta back in, uh, I think, 94. And uh, we ran for about four or five years and then took a brief hiatus from the, uh, the regular season or from the, uh, the competitive hockey and just got back into it the last couple years. What have been some of your observations about the hockey team over the last few years? Uh, we're definitely moving in the right direction. Uh, the yeah. team started out slow. Okay. Um, so we were a couple years seven. without uh, winning the games, right. um, but I knew that was going to be the case coming in, that uh, we were using players that were probably uh, grade 9, grade 10, just to re reinvent the, the program and get it back started from square one. We went with a younger team knowing that we'd have them for four, four maybe possibly five years. So that was the, uh, the, the long-term project, and uh, we knew we'd take it on the chin for the first couple of years, but this year we, we turned the corner and uh, won in total four, four games, and we're very close to the playoffs this year. That's really exciting. Um, what would you say some of the strengths of the team are? Uh, definitely our goaltending. Um, Eric Davis has been with us. For <laughs> Devin Hill. 
program now two, three years and uh, look for uh, better things from them next year. And I know with the extra year of uh, experience that they'll definitely ad uh, adapt to it. Um, up, up front, uh, we've got some very uh, skilled forwards. Uh, we were lucky to uh, land Billy Ulrich, who was a Harry J student. He's a grade nine. He was actually our captain this year, and that's virtually unheard of as a grade nine student. But uh, he, uh, he led the team in scoring and uh, was a real leader on the ice force. So who would you say some of the on and off ice, ice leaders would be? Um, you know what, uh, one of the things we've tried to instill in the, the kids all from day one, Alana, is that um, they have to represent Moira um, very well, both on and off the ice. And, you know, to the credit of uh, all the players involved, they've uh, really stepped up to the plate and, and uh, taken that approach and done a really good job with it. So, you know, in answer to that question, I'd say all the players have uh, conducted themselves of, you know, the highest moral value, um, both on the ice and off the ice. We're, we're really pleased. Uh, we, we play a lot of teams, and sometimes the games get out of control. Um, some of the kids have uh, rivalries with some of the other kids from neighboring schools, but we've been very clear with our, uh, from the outset with the players of our um, demands that, you know, that they, they do not fight, that any uh, altercations on the ice will lead to suspensions from school, and again, that uh, they are representing Moira in the, uh, the neighborhood when they're out at these rinks and not, uh, you know, their club team that they play for. So the, the kids have really adapted that and they've really uh, uh, accepted that approach and w we've been very proud of their both on ice and off ice uh, conduct and behavior. You ready? There's your guy. Where's my high? Whoa, 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 whoa. Who, who, who's my 2D on this one? So forget him. Okay, you ready? Here we go. Okay, and even before... I've been coaching at Moira Secondary uh, for one year. This is my first year as a teacher here at Moira Secondary, and I'm looking forward to many, many more years here coaching and guiding students into their process of life. I coach uh, football, junior and senior. I was a receivers coach and special teams coordinator. Um, I also was an offensive coordinator in a couple of games this year, which I found to be very uh, rewarding. Uh, I also am the head track and field coach here at um, Wire, and we're trying to rebound that program and get it on track, no pun intended. The hockey program here at Wire Secondary School is a course. It's called IDC 301-401, and it is a comprehensive uh, nuts and bolts kind of course that has to do with every facet of the, the uh, sport of hockey, i.e. the business component, the history component, the off-ice conditioning component. Uh, and then we have the strategic component of uh, offense and defense, situational uh, uh, and uh, special specialty teams situations that we go over in depth. And it's a one uh, uh, term course that uh, enables the kids to get on the ice three times a week, separate from any other program that we have going, i.e. the varsity program. And it's a great compliment to our team. Typical hockey practice for us uh, depends on the time of season and also depends upon our opponent. Um, we try and make sure that we have a general idea of who we're playing so that we exercise a, uh, a, a, an appropriate game plan. And we also try to key on things that we did not do well in previous games or situations in practice and we try to key on those and uh, make sure our team is always moving forward and looking for ways to improve. Uh, for the actual course, the, uh, the benefits are the fact you get on the ice three times a week. Uh, you also have uh, an off-ice component that we are very actively engaged in uh, weekly. And the fact that kids learn so much about the sport that they really didn't consider previously. Uh, and they get an, uh, an opportunity to, to, to practice some of the things that, uh, that they probably wouldn't get to do because uh, now this course is offered. I look for... Uh, uh, leaders that can motivate the players without me having to go into the room and tell them what to do. I look for guys that lead uh, on the ice uh, through their play and their sportsmanship or their ability to get guys going. I also look uh, for guys that uh, are very quiet in some cases. Uh, one of our leaders this year was our goaltender and he was a very solid calming effect for our team and guys looked up to him. The goals for next year uh, have to do a lot with the way we finished. 
we made the playoffs. Next year now we know we are a contending team. We are going to be a year more experienced. Um, we are going to make it a, a priority to play more games next year. Uh, we are going to have a more defined team because as years go on, players leave, new guys fill in the void. And I think that the kids that are going to be coming in, most of them being the great tens uh, coming in, are going to be able to walk into a situation where they're going to be able to play. And with the odd grade nine that might come in, could surprise a few people as well. Okay, go. Push it, push it forward. Thank you. Good. Puck, puck, puck. Hi, um, we're here with uh, Kyle Begley, who was uh, a member of the uh, Moyer varsity hockey team the last couple of years. I just wanted to ask Kyle from a player's perspective, um, what it was like playing for Moyer for the last couple of years? Uh, it was a very fun experience. Uh, there's a lot of experience on Moyer, and uh, we ha we have a good team, this young team now, right now. We're but uh, we're making our way back up, and we'll be back in the playoffs next year. One of the things that uh, stands out, Kyle, is that uh, in talking to the other players, is that you were a great motivational uh, tool for the players prior to games. Can you just uh, allude to some of the things that you did to to get the guys ready? Because we did notice a a greatly improved level of play from the players, especially at the start of the games in the first period. Yeah, well, uh, you know, after if you go in the, in the intermission and you're down and, you know, you're like, well, we're going to lose the game. Well, you can't stay like that. So, you know, I just gave them a little bubbles impersonation, get them fired up, get them going again. And uh, they came out firing. Can you give us a quick example? Well, I just went in there like this, and, you know, say, boys, we're not down and out of this. You know, we got to fire them back up, go out there and fire hard. And that's all you got to do. And then we win a game, get a couple goals, and we're right back in it, boys. Kyle, it's been a real pleasure having you associated with the, the Moyer hockey team. And uh, we hope that uh, definitely you're able to, when you graduate this year, find a job in Belleville and stay close to uh, the Moyer community and also help out with the hockey program. So on behalf of uh, Mr. Doyle, Mr. Crawford, and myself, uh, we'd really like to thank you for your participation and also your commitment to uh, the Moyer varsity hockey team. Thank you very much. I enjoyed doing it. Very fun.
you, Isaac. How can we show the community all the great things more students do? Hmm, more in the newspaper just about every week, and on the radio on a regular basis. Yeah, but I mean like every day, 24-7, 365 days a year. Hmm, we need inspiration, a sign. That's it, a sign. What sign? I didn't see anything. <laughs> no, not a sign, silly. A new school sign. Just think of it. Digital signs with animation every day. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. Wow. We would have the best sign in all the schools. We could post all the achievements that our Morris students do to the community. Every day. 24-7, 365 days a year. That's great. But that's going to cost a bundle. We need to raise some money. Hmm. Let's, uh, sell subscriptions to books. It's easy. We can go door to door and sell, sell, sell. Yeah. If all the students, and that means you, you, and you, all sell one book, we'll be well on our way to raising money for that sign. Cool, but what's Trojan Pride, and how do we show it? And how do we sell, sell, sell? Did you say Trojan Pride? Yeah! Okay, Little C, let's go sell these magazine subscriptions. What are magazine subscriptions, Big C? I don't know, but let's sell lots. Yeah! Welcome to Raven TV, and we threw in some uh, old flashbacks for you guys. Anything to add in, Chloe? Well, there were definitely some exciting memories in there, that's for sure. Quite, from dancing on tables to people dressing up as Santa Claus. It's and been random a... fish. <laughs> yes, there's been quite a lot. So we thank you guys for watching the show for all these years. So I am Michael Kowal, this is Chloe Robinson, and thank you guys for watching Raven TV. Thank you.